Uh, welcome to Basics of Noise and its Measurement. My name is Nachiketa Tiwari. This is week 1 and what you are going to listen to is the fifth lecture of this week. Uh, today, what we are going to talk about are some of the principal terms, some of the key terminology which is used in the area of acoustics and noise and its measurement. Uh, so, let us look at some of these terms. So, what we will talk about are all of these terms, decibels, octaves, decades, bandwidth, wave number, tones, noise and noise is of two types, pink noise and white noise and then weighting I have put it here, but probably I will not talk about it today. Um, we will definitely cover weighting. Uh, but it will happen maybe a little later in the course. But decibels, octaves, decades, bandwidth, wave number, tones, pink noise, white noise, these are some of the terms which we will definitely learn what in terms of what they mean in today's lecture. So, tones, what uh, is a tone? When I say 500 hertz tone, what it means is that I have generated a sound wave. The shape of the sound wave along uh, if I may plot it in uh, as a function of if I plot the pressure as a function of time is a sinusoidal function. So, a tone is a sinusoidally shaped pressure wave as a function of time. So, if I say that it is a 500 side sine wave then it means that so, 500 hertz tone it means that pressure is nothing but some amplitude sin 2 pi f t plus some phase and this value is 500 hertz. So, that for that reason this is known as a 500 hertz tone. So, I can have a 500 hertz tone, 20 hertz, 1000 hertz tone, 1000 hertz tone and whatever. So, that is what a tone is. The next term is an octave. So, what is an octave? So, octave is the interval between two sound pitches or two tones which are separated by a factor of 2. So, what does that mean? So, you have an octave. Okay. So, I can say 20 to 40 hertz. This is an octave. Why is it an octave? Because the ratio of this 40 over 20 is 2. So, that is why it is an octave. Now, why do we actually call it as something octave O C T? Because typically O C T corresponds to the notion of 8 that we will see later, but if the ratio of the upper. So, suppose there is a band in which sound is being produced and there is an upper limit of that band, there is a lower limit of the by band and if the ratio of these two frequencies is 2 then it is an octave. Another example of an octave 40 to 80 hertz, another example of an octave 80 to 160 hertz, another example of an octave 22.5 to 45 hertz. So, as long as this f 2 and f 1 if the ratio of f 2 over f 1 is equal to 2 then that band of uh, sound is known as an octave. Similarly, uh, this terminology is used uh, based on because of some historic reasons, but once uh, the SI system came into picture then people also introduced a term known as known as a decade. So, some examples of decades 2 to 20 hertz, 
f 1 is equal to or 10 f 1 is equal to f 2. This is f 2, this is f 1, so 2 to 20 hertz. Okay. Another example of decade 20 to 200 hertz. This is again a decade. So, all the frequencies lying in between 20 to 200 hertz belong to this particular decade 20 to 200 hertz decade. So, octave in case of an octave the ratio of upper frequency limit and lower frequency limit is 2 in case of a decade the ratio is 10. In uh, most of the engineering literature octaves are more popular compared to decade. But uh, rega regardless, when we plot the frequencies on a logarithmic scale, either we plot on the x axis octaves or we plot on the x axis decades. But uh, so, so, the only difference between these two is the ratio of uh, two frequencies upper and lower uh, bandwidths, uh, lower limits of the band. So, that is what a tone is and that is what a on octave is. Now, I wanted to give you a historic perspective as to where this number comes from. So, in western classical music and in Indian classical music, we have these seven notes in Hindi, Hindustani classical or Carnatic classical music, we have this sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa, you know. So, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, these are seven notes and then you go to the next uh, level and that is sa again. So, there are eight notes, total of eight notes when the cycle of the whole thing starts again. Similarly, in western classical music, you start with c, d, e, f, g, a, b. So, these are seven notes and then you go to the eighth note and then again you start with another C or another Sa. So, because the eighth note starts with another Sa that is why this entire and the ratio of the lower Sa in this case let us say it is 240 hertz and then you keep on going down and then the next Sa which comes or next C which comes is 480 hertz. So, because the ratio of these two frequencies historically was set at 2 both on the Indian side as well as on the western side. So, that why that is why it was known as octave. So, octave was a band of uh, you know a frequency bandwidth in which the upper limit and the lower limit was 2, but there were 8 nodes in between you know 8 nodes in between. So, that is what uh, is the historic perspective. So, in octave in western classical music and an octave in Indian classical music the ratio of the frequencies was 2, but there was 7 intermediate notes and the 8th note was again a repetition, but in the next octave. Now, in that context I also wanted to bring to your notice some information about intermediate frequencies. And first we will look at the western classical system and then we will go to the Indian classical system. So, in western classical system you start with C note C which corresponds to Sa in Hindustani, then you go to D which corresponds to Nai, uh, Sa Re, Re in Indian system, then you go to E which corresponds to Ga and so on and so forth. And if you look at the ratio of the frequencies here. And then between C and D you have a C sharp or a D flat, between D and E you have a D sharp or an E flat and then between E and F you do not have an intermediate frequency, but between F and G you have a F sharp or a G flat and so on and so forth. And then when you look at the ratios of adjacent frequencies between C and C sharp it is 1.0595, between C sharp and D it is again 1.0595 and so on and so forth. And if you multiply all these factors 1.0595, 1, 2, 3 uh, you know we multiply these by itself the re required number of times essentially you will get a factor of 2 and that factor of 2 corresponds to 
the frequency the ratio frequency of the lower C and the higher C. And because these ratios are constant and they are set at 1.0595, this scale of notes which is used in western classical music which spans over C, D, E, F, G, A, B and then starts with another C. This scale of uh, west, uh, notes is known as equally tempered scale because these notes are in geometric progression and they get multiplied, their frequencies get multiplied by 1.0595 successively. So, that is what an octave means in a western classical music and that is how we have borrowed that term octave into scientific language. So, the next thing we look at is the Indian classical music. And in Indian classical music, uh, these notes are known as Shrutis and the whole scale is known as a Sargam. So, the basic uh, note is known as Sa and Sa is an abbreviation for this note called Shadaj. Then you have Re which is an abbreviation for Rishabh. Then we have Ga which is Gandhar, Ma Madhyam, Pa Pancham, Dha Dhavit, Ni Nishad and then you have the next Sa which is in the next level. Okay. Now, in western classical music, these ratios were set at 1.0595 and they were also intermediate frequencies C sharp or D flat, D sharp or V flat, E sharp or G flat and so on and so forth. Similarly, between Shadaj and Rishabh, there are intermediate frequencies, Rishabh and Gandhar, there are intermediate frequencies and so on and so forth. So, that is that much is similar between uh, how notes are organized in western and cla Indian classical systems. But a key difference between these two systems is that in Indian classical system, the ratio of frequency of the lower sa and the higher sa is 2, but the ratio between adjacent frequencies is not set at 1.0595, but it is set at a level which is most pleasing to the ear. So, in western classical music, you have ratios which are 1.0595 and they are determined mathematically but there is no reason why they have to sound good or bad, but they are mathematically determined because that is how they figured it out. But in western Indian system, they did not use a rigid mathematical formula for going to successive frequencies, but they said that okay, all the intermediate frequencies will be tuning them at specific values such that they sound most pleasant to our ears. So, that is how they figured out all the intermediate frequencies, but they made sure that between one sa and the next level sa, the ratio was preserved at 2. So, because this particular scale the, on the Indian side, it does justice to our ears, it is known as just tempered scale and the western classical music is known as equally tempered scale because the ratios of adjacent frequencies are equal. So, you have a just tempered scale and an equally tempered, just tempered scale in case of Indian music and equally tempered scale in case of western classical music. So, that is what I wanted to talk about octaves and decades. Now, it just turns out that uh, theoretically I can have one particular frequency and just two times it that will be an octave. So, I can have 1 hertz to 2 hertz uh, that is an octave and also it could be uh, 1.5 hertz to 3 hertz that is also an octave. But then when we report literature, uh, when we report results in uh, standard formats, typically we use some standard octaves. So, for those standard octaves there are some preferred frequencies and those are written down here. So, those frequencies are 1 to 2 that is an octave. So, we start with 1, we go to 2, then 4, then 8, then 16 and then we do not go to 30, uh, 32, but rather we go to 31.5 and then double of that is again 63, then double of that is 126, but we go to 125 because we want to end up at 1000. So, there is slight variation in the choice of frequencies then the 63 to 125, 250, 500 and 1000. So, that is why that is how we have a preferred set of frequencies and typically we use these frequencies 
when we are reporting data on logarithmic scales. And then there is also something known as a one-third octave band. So, in case of one-third octave band, the ratio of F2 to F1 is, no, is not 2, but 2 to the power of 1 over 3, which is 1.26. And in that case, the one-third octave frequencies are again tabulated here and they start with 1.25, 1.25, 1.6 and so on and so forth. So, these are the octave bands which we talk about. Then we have bandwidth and what is a bandwidth? It is the difference between upper and lower frequencies in a contiguous set of frequencies. So, you have F 1 to F 2, so that your band is F 2 minus F 1. Each band has a center frequency and then uh, the audio bandwidth is 20 to 20,000 hertz and a lot of times we use these three terms bass, middle and high or treble and they allude to whether the frequency we are discussing about is low frequency, middle frequency or high frequency. And the term which we will come across rapid uh, frequently will be wave number which is nothing but 2 pi over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave. And since uh, lambda equals uh, c over f, where c is the velocity of sound and f is the frequency. So, wave number is 2 pi f over c or omega, which is angular frequency divided by velocity of sound. We have already talked about tones and noise, uh, tones, but then this another uh, type of sound uh, which is frequently used is in engineering literature and it is known as noise. And what is noise? It is essentially uh, a sound which has all sorts of frequencies mixed up into it. And a lot of times we actually define what is the content of each frequency uh, when we are defining noise. So, we can have different types of noise. We can have uh, a, a type of noise known as white noise. And in white noise, what we have is that we have equal power within a fixed bandwidth for any center frequency. So, and then for then there is another type of noise known as pink noise and here the power spectral density is inversely proportional to the frequency or it is or alternatively you can also say that there was equal power in each octave and we will we'll see this is also known as 1 over f noise and we will see uh, some more details about it. So, here is a table which talks about pink noise and uh, white noise. So, the pink column is uh, corresponding to pink noise and the white uh, gray column uh, corresponds to white noise. So, now let us look at this uh, table carefully. So, what you see is that when you have this pink power, so from 1 to 2 hertz band, the total power in that band is 0.75 hertz for pink noise. Then 2 to 4 hertz, again it is a uh, one octave wide band, uh, the power is still 0.75. So, each time you go up an octave, the band, uh, the total power in that particular band remains at 0.75 hertz. But when you have white noise, then it does not happen like that. You start with 0.7, then you go to the next band, your power actually goes up by a factor of 2, so it is 1.5. Then you go to the next uh, octave. 4 to 8 hertz, your power goes to 3, uh, 3, then you go to 8 to 16 hertz, again that is an octave, but your power it keeps on going up by a factor of 2. So, what that means is that in pink uh, noise, you have per octave the energy content is same, but in white noise, you have per octave the energy content keeps on going up as you go up uh, on the frequency scale. And what I will do here is actually play both these types of noise so that you can get a feel of how they sound like. So, this is what uh, white noise sounds like. I will play it again. So, this is white noise and this is pink noise. So, this is how these two different types of noises sound like. Uh, you can interpret uh, 
this uh, in a way that pink noise is a little more gentle it's uh, and if you look at its spectrum we will talk about this later also it's closer to real music but white noise is a little more harsher and uh, not that uh, pleasing or appealing to our ears so that i think brings to the closure of uh, this module this particular lecture and uh, thank you very much for listening to it and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow.